There's many places that we could find in the New Testament that talk about, you know, caring for the brethren and loving the brethren, praying for people. Uh, but I just want to just turn to this one, one point here that I think ties in perfectly well with what we're reading in Psalm 20. Look at verse number 2 in Colossians 4. The Bible reads, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. This is the Apostle Paul entreating the, the, the church at, at Colossae, the Colossians, to uh, pray for them, saying, hey, you guys pray for us. Pray that God's going to open up this door for us to preach the gospel. Please be in prayer for us. Think about us. And then if you jump down to verse number 12, the Bible reads here, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him record that he hath a great zeal for you and them that are in Laodicea and them in Hierapolis. So basically he's saying here we have Epaphras. And Epaphras is he's one of you. So I assume he's from Colossae. I assume he's from that area. It's basically saying, you know, he's one of you and he's a servant of Christ and he saluteth you. Now, he could just be referring to the fact that he's saved, like, hey, this is just another brother in Christ. That's another possibility. You know, I, I don't know if you could tell either way from the way it's written, but that's not what's important, right? It's not, it doesn't matter whether or not he's physically from there. What's, what's most important is that he is a servant of Christ, and he, he's saying, hey, he wants you to know he's always laboring fervently for you in prayers. So he's thinking about you, he's praying for you, he's praying for your benefit, praying for your well-being, and he's doing this fervently. I mean, he is not forgetting. He is very sure to be praying and keeping you in mind in prayers to the Lord, you know, on a regular basis. And what's he praying for? That you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. He's saying, praying that God will strengthen you, that you'll be able to keep going and moving forward and bring a blessing on you, that you can keep uh, uh, being in the will of God. Let's go back to Psalm 20. Because everything that's being brought up in Psalm 20 about God hearing you in the day of trouble is where it starts off in verse 1, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. And for the next four verses, everything he brings up are all things that we've looked at already before in other Psalms where if you want to have God listening to you like this, you're going to have to be listening to him. You're going to be in obedience to him. You need to be living righteously for God to be hearing you in your day of trouble, right? Where you're not just have this stiff neck and not listening to him. Because if you do that, then God's going to say, well, I'm not going to listen to you, right? So it's interesting how in Colossians 4, too, you say, you know, the prayer is that, hey, that you're going to be in the will of the Lord and you're going to continue doing the right thing. Because in so doing, then God will hear us, right? And what we see in Psalm 20 here is just, hey, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. So this is a psalm about someone that I believe he knows is already living righteously. Someone who is doing a good work because he's saying, hey, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name, and, and I'll get to that in a little bit. I kind of jumped ahead just for a, a split second there because we start to see that as it changes from these four verses of talking about thee to then we, Right? The people who are play, praying for thee, it talks about we, and then it goes further with a conclusion at the end of this psalm. And it's a short psalm, but it's, it's, it's great what's, with all the content that's in this psalm. So he's saying, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Right? Praying for someone else's benefit. Praying that, hey, I want God to defend you. I want God to hear you. When you come into troubles, I want God to be there for you. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Verse number three, remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. See, he's praying, just basically saying, hey, when you offer up your offerings, I want God to see those offerings, to accept those offerings, that those offerings will be acceptable by God. And, you know, the only way that those, that will be the case is if the person is, you know, basically doing right by the Lord. 